Shalom Ubracha. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Baruch Hashem. We have a great will and a holy desire, a fantastic passion just to to bring down another amount of wonderful light to the world and to remind ourselves just that really like that it's written on the Torah that when the nation of Israel received got the Torah from Mount Sinai from the Creator on Mount Sinai so Hashem was saying the words of wisdom to the ones who were there and to the ones that were not there means that he was talking to the souls of the people that were standing means to the bodies of those people and also to the next generations means that all the souls that were standing um, all this all the souls that were not alive back then like us let's say that we came to the world only now 3,000 years or so later still we were there in spirit so he spoke to the bodies to the physical people that were there but also to all the souls that were in the future to come about to be obligated to the Torah so we have been experiencing the the giving of the Torah that amazing um, time of receiving the wisdom of the Torah even though that physically we were not there and it's written on the obligation to learn Torah that that's exactly what we're doing right now sitting and learning and trying to to grab some some words of wisdom for our connection with God it means that we're learning Torah now it's written that we should learn the Torah today like we were standing in front of, of the Mount Sinai. Now, in this time that we're sitting and learning Torah, we need to believe that we're receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai. So, to that aspect of us understanding that the Torah that we're learning that is revealing itself to us right now is being given to us the physical ones who are standing or sitting or accepting it physically right now but also to the next generations it means also to the ones who are not here so our intention is supposed to be also to accept it and to learn the lesson for ourselves but also for us to inherit to give it to share it with the next generations or with people that are not sitting or standing with us in the same place right now. The intention to learn must be for us to teach. This is why I'm teaching. The reason that I'm teaching is because that what else can I do or should I do with the wisdom that the Creator is sharing with me, except for really to pass it on and to allow myself or force myself sometimes even to, to do the best that I can to share it with you guys and with the ones who are um, in the future to come will join us. So I wanted to give you some insight um, today, tonight, about the important um, and maybe main and most known verse of the Bible Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, the holy verse. And I uh, prepared that note for you guys on the verse for you to have the ability to see it. And of course that everyone know this verse, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And I wanted to explain to you, first of all we'll talk about the meaning of it. And we can go a little bit into the, the, the depths of the, of the letters, the meanings of, of the word. And also we can talk a little bit more in a deeper way about how should we aim and what should be in our hearts and in our mind while saying that amazing verse. So first of all, we are obligated to say that verse 
um, minimum twice a day, one time in the morning when we wake up. It doesn't need to be the first thing we do in the morning. There are a few things that a person can do or should do um, before he say that verse, but um, you cannot go from the side of the obligation to say that verse um, to the noon time. You cannot cross half the day without saying that verse. So actually in the morning, as soon as we're able to, after washing our hands and saying some other things, I'm not going to get into all the detail of the order of the day, but like after you organize yourself now, you should say the verse Shema Yisrael. And then at night after sunset, um, and it's better to say that after three stars are already out in the sky when it's complete darkness, then it's the time to say it the second time that day. And when you say that verse twice a day, so you're crowning the Creator on yourself and crowning the Creator on the whole world and the creation, on His own creation. And that's a great privilege. It's a huge blessing for a person to be able to be part of something so great and so big. And now we're going to talk about this verse and we're going to see why that verse is, why this verse is so um, important and why, what, what it contains, what is so important and, and great in that verse that, um, that people should be so, um, so connected to it. How can it be that it's so important for us to say that verse twice a day? What's, what, what does it contain? So first of all, the meaning of, of the words. Shema means listen. And the next word, Israel, a call to a person that his soul is Israeli or to the general public of Israel, Hashem, as we call him Adonai. That's the way that we pronounce this name, even though that in Hebrew, you're going to read those four letters in a total different way than to say the word Adonai, that it's the name of Hashem. This is the name Yud Vavke that we today, as of today, until the temple will be built and we're all going to be purified in the way that will be revealed to us um, in that day of redemption, when we will be purified on our way to the temple, then we will be allowed over there in the temple to call him in his name that will be pronounced with those letters, Yud, and the letter He, and the letter Vav, and the letter He. But as of today, we can only say the name Adonai that is not written here, but that's how we're going to call Hashem, the Creator, when we're going to say that word, when we will want to call him in his name, okay? So we're saying Shema Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu. Eloheinu means our God. So um, God, in English, you're probably going to say God, our Lord, or something like that. But those two names are different names for the same one. Of course, that you have some sick people that misinterpret the verses, and they will think that you, God forbid, have two different um, authorities, kingships, and like if God has two names, so God forbid, God forbid, like there are two um, entities um, or, 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 or authorities or, or crowns, but God forbid that's 100% wrong and, and very, very off track. There is only one God and that's exactly the meaning of that verse. And soon we're going to get to the intention of that verse and going to speak about it. And you're going to see that, that that's what it's written here, actually. So we're saying, Hashem, Adonai, Eloheinu, He's our God. Adonai, the same way that we said it here, Echad is one. Okay, so we're saying, Shema Israel, listen Israel, I'm calling you. Listen to me. Hashem, Elokeinu. Hashem Echad, we're calling him and we're saying and announcing that he is one. Now, what's the difference between that name Yudke Vavke to the name Eloheinu? What's the difference between those two names? 
The difference between those two names are like heaven and earth. Like you would think to yourself that there is no connection between them. But it's like to introduce you to a person. And then when you see that person, you shake his hand, you tell him, Shalom Aleichem, hello, how are you? And when you meet him in the first time, <coughs> before talking to him, before knowing him, you actually see only his body. But after a conversation or many years of relationship, you're going to understand that that person holds much, much more, way more inside of himself. And that will be the result of knowing him that you saw and met and came in touch with his soul, with his spirit. So the name Hashem, Elokenu, Adonai, Elohenu, those are two names that one of them is showing to us, telling us, reflecting to us the leadership of God on earth. That is the name Elohenu. And the name Adonai that is written in Yud and then Hey and then Vav and then Hey is after you know God deeply after you have a long and deep and meaningful relationship and communication with him, and you learn how to recognize his intention and his insight, then you find his soul. Then you can understand his heart. And that is the name Adonai. That is the name that is written in Yud and the letter He and the letter Vav and the letter He. So how come that... Um, those two names are reflecting the same one and they are still divided and two because when the creator created the world his intention and his mindset was to reveal his loving kindness on us but when things came into um, into reality and dressed in covering in physical coverings so the creator saw that only through that loving kindness there will be no way to keep on leading uh, the world because people had to be forced and people had to be educated and people had to be commanded. It's like that a parent in his house, he can be as nice as he wants with his children. With time he will find himself in a situation that he must be strict that he must learn how to put borders and limitations to his children. There is no way in the world, no matter how much you love your children, that you will be able as a parent to guide them only with complete unconditional love and mercy. This thing does not happen in this world. In this world, you need to create balance between heaven and earth, between freedom and 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 borders you must learn how to educate you must learn how to put walls how to create separations and those separations are for the success of the child it's for his education it's for him to understand appreciation it's for him to understand that there is an authority that parents needs to be respect for their good actions and for their kindness and for their effort and for them being your parents and on and on and on and for those good attributes to catch into the physical structure of a person or into his emotional body for that some education needs to take place and this is why Hashem the creator that is called in Yud K Vav K the God that we believe that is mercy had to use a secondary name a name that will not hold in the same level of goodness as yud k vav k and will lead the world in the path of judgments and this is the name elohenu this is the name elohim and when we are saying that Hashem Elokenu Hashem Echad, that our God is that God that we call him Yudke Vavke, and he is one with Elokenu, with the name Elohim, 
by that we're answering all the questions and all the doubts that a person can come and come across and and find himself struggle with in his lifetime and this is the importance of that verse that when you say that verse and you say Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad you're reminding yourself that everything that goes on in this world is actually an outcome of the loving kindness of the Creator. You are refreshing, shaking, waking up your memory to realize that the difficulties, that the challenges, that the judgments, that the constrictions, that the poverty, that all the darkness that you might experience in this physical world is <clears throat> a way of leadership that the Creator chose to use for a certain purpose, a divine and godly purpose that He realized that is the right one for our education but meanwhile that we are going in that valley in that low place in that course of of judgments and 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 challenges we must remember that the root of all of that is his goodness like a child needs a wise child needs to remind himself that even though that his parents might be upset with him or hard or harsh or rebuking him or whatever if those are not are like normal people normal parents so their intentions are good and pure <clears throat> even if it's hard for you as a child to experience them so that is generally the intention of that verse and there is something important I want to say as well that while saying Shema Israel, listen Israel, first of all, um, one of the main things that a person should remind himself is that when you say Shema Israel, you have few options to aim with those couple of words. When you say Shema Israel and you mean listen Israel, you can first of all aim that verse to yourself like we said in the beginning that you are waking up yourself that you are waking up yourself from your deep sleep to remind yourself the faith that no matter what you see with your eyes it's all coming from a divine source of goodness so you wake up yourself by calling yourself Israel a second intention that a person can have while saying that verse by while saying those couple of words is to call others to wake up. You don't say Shema Israel only to myself that I'm reminding myself that I am Israel. Also you're saying Shema Israel, you call other people. You're calling them to believe that they will not break under the, the yoke of, 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 of physical world. That they will not fall under and collapse under the difficulties and challenges of, of our mission to hold on in faith and to believe in the Creator and it's a very very important um, mission for us to educate ourselves and to educate others for us to send that positive message to wake up and remind ourselves of the purpose to be attached and strong and glued with, with the oneness with the unity of the Creator reminding ourselves of how good he is and as well in the same time to spread that light that any beam of light that strikes you that hits you immediately going to fly back to to another place go go and spread out to the world for as many people as possible will wake up and 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 will smell the roses and will be attached to to that amazing wisdom now, um, for me, it's very important um, to explain to you a few things about the nation of Israel. And this is something that I spoke many times about. When we're saying the word Israel, that you can see here, so 
there are many many interpretations to that name this is a very holy name and that name holds a lot of wisdom in it first of all we can see that the letters Aleph and Lamed are written in that name and Aleph and Lamed are the is are is one of the names of God like you can see here in the name Elohenu that is our God and that word Elohenu means our God comes from the word Elohim that is the name of God Elohim and also in the word Elohim that is one of the names of God you have Elohim here instead of Nun and Vav you're gonna have Mem like this Mem or a different Mem that is square that is a mem that you put in the end of a word. But anyway, the word Elohim, the word Elohenu, holds inside of it the word El. And El means God. So also in the name Israel, you have the word God, Israel. It's a secret and a, a revealed and known, but still hidden secret to tell us that God lives inside of us, but how does he live inside of us? Yeshar El, Yisrael, when you are Yeshar, when you are straight, when you're honest, when you're truthful. The word Yeshar means honest, means that you are straight with Hashem, means that you're saying the truth. It means that you're not going to the right and not going to the left, that you are focusing yourself in that midah, in that attribute of truth. This is the power that connects you to God. This is what you should do to be connect with God. You should be honest. You should be truthful. You should be loyal. You should be strong in that. Now, one person will tell you, okay, you want to be honest, so you must do this. And another person will tell you, okay, you want to be truthful, so you have to do this. And everyone will take you elsewhere to his truth, to his understanding of what truth is all about. But me, my name is Dror. And Dror is a true sparrow in the holy language of Hebrew. That's the meaning of the word Dror, is freedom. And I'm free to tell you my thoughts. And I'm not working for no one. And I'll tell you my opinion. And you should be open-minded to listen to it. And you're allowed to reject it if you don't want. But I think that like the verse is saying, وَأَهَبْتَ إِتَ شَمْ أَلُهَيْخَ بِخَلْ لِبَوْخَ وَبْخَلْ نَفْشِخَ وَبْخَلْ مَوْدِخَ You should love Hashem with all your heart. With all the power you have, with all the, 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 with all your might, with everything you can find, you should serve him and love him. It means that God gave it to our hearts to believe in him and to follow him. It means that the truth that you should seek, should look for, must be the truth of your heart. You cannot betray your own heart and serving God. There is no way for you to be separated from your own heart and to be a servant of God. There is, there is no possibility like that. If your heart is elsewhere and you do something else, that is not the way to worship. That is not the way to be in touch. On that, the Creator told us how can I respect you? How can I accept your prayers when you spoke one thing to me, but your heart was elsewhere? How can it be that a person, let's say someone, comes every day to his wife and tells her, I love you, I love you, you're amazing, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, you're nice, you're righteous, all the compliments in the world, and then she sees that he's looking on other women. And then she sees that he cares about uh, his business more than he cares about her, or his hobbies more than he cares about her. How can she follow those compliments when seeing that physically his heart is pulled elsewhere? She cannot. She will never buy those compliments ever again. And those compliments will be considered as lies. Why? Because when your heart 
is not with your mouth, if you have one thing in your heart and another thing in your heart, one thing in your mouth and one thing in your heart, you can, it's, it's a lie. You must have a connection between your mouth to your heart that they will be equal. And that is a straight person that he's following his heart, that the words that are coming out of his mouth are attached and connected and perfectly one with the deep understanding of his heart. And that is the real intention of what we are supposed to do while trying to be people of truth and honest people. We must ask ourselves in every moment, what is the truth? What is the right thing to do? What we need to do? How will I serve God with truth? Not what that person told me that the truth is. Not what that rabbi told me that the truth is. Or not what those crazy people told me that the truth is. What I sense that the truth is. What do I feel that is the truth? Because truth can be recognized. Words of truth can be recognized. And by who? By each and every one of us. If now in your life someone will ask you a question, you know exactly what the answer, the honest answer is. If he will ask you if you can support him, if you can give charity, if he will ask you if you have that book, if he will ask you if you're going somewhere, if he can catch a ride with you, any question that that person will ask you, you know the real truth about his question. You know the honest answer. You might choose to hide the truth, not to reply honestly, to lie. You can do whatever you want. Sometimes you can choose not to say the truth, the bare truth, the most open and sincere truth, because you want to protect yourself and then it's going to be okay. But still, you know to recognize the truth. If someone asks you if you are Danny, if you are Sarah, you know if you are Danny or if you are Sarah. You know the truth. If he asks you, do you live in New York? Do you live in, uh, in Baltimore? Do you live in San Francisco? You know the truth. Have you ever visited in the Holy Land of Israel? You know the truth. You always know the truth. That's the problem with you, that you always know the truth. But unfortunately, you don't choose to say the truth always. You don't choose to be truthful in every situation. When your wife tells you, you're lazy, why aren't you helping me? You know the truth if she just caught you on something wrong or that you don't understand really in reality what she's talking about or or. or or that you feel that there was a mistake over there in that situation. But you know the truth. What you will choose to do with that truth, that's, that's the, the route of, of the failure of, that's your crash way. That's your way to crash. That's, that's, that's exactly why your, your, your life looks like that they, they look. Because we choose not to be honest. We choose not to be totally truthful. But... But a person that is, is saying the truth, Hashem will be close to him. Like the verse is saying, Karov Hashem lechol korav. Hashem is close to everyone who will call him, to everyone who will call him with truth. Lechol asher ikreu, be'emet. So when you are holding yourself close to the truth, then you are close to God. Because Hashem elokim emet. Another verse is saying, Hashem, God, Elohim, that name that we mentioned, the second name of God, Emet, He is truth. His kindness and His judgments are all truth, are all one. It's unity. It's Him and His actions. It's the truth. Now, when you are saying the truth, you are becoming one with God because the seal of God is the seal of truth. God is saying the truth. God is the truth. The truth that there is God is forcing the truth to attach you to God. 
the fact that there is God is the answer to who God is. He is the completion of it all. He is the one that there is everything. And it's all being reflected. And I have hours of, of explanations to give you on every one of those topics that we just mentioned. But for us to understand, to be connected and to be honest with God, like we said, Yisrael, to be connected with God in that way of being Yashar El, straight with God, is to be straight in your heart. It's to be attached with God through the honesty of your heart in every moment, in every single moment of your life, you should be truthful when they're asking you if you can wash the dishes, if they're asking you if you can watch the kids, if they're asking you if you want to join this place, if you want to help give a hand in that, if they ask you what are you doing, what are you checking in your phone, when they're asking you if you want to come and learn with them, if they're asking you what's the number of your shoes, when they're asking you if they can catch a ride with you, if they're rebuking you on you, hurting people and insulting people and rebuking people, whatever, no matter how harsh and hard the rebuke will be on you, you should be in every moment of your life as honest and as truthful and as straight and loyal as you can. And by that, you reveal the nature of your noble soul that been given to you by God. And this is why we're saying that the name of God is treasured inside of you when you are honest, when you are straight, when you are Yashar. Also, you can see here that it's written with different vowels, Yashir El. Gonna sing to God. You can sing to God. You can sing to him. There are many ways to say that verse. And one of them is through singing. And you should sing to him. You should sing to him the verse in a way that you will feel connection. And I know that many of you guys, my, my, really, you're, you're like a family to me, my beloved family. You are are souls of Israel. Even if you think to yourselves that you're Gentile, that you're not Jewish, I must tell you, don't be disappointed. You are not Gentile and not part of Israel and belong to a different nation, even if you think that you are. Now, it doesn't mean that you're Jewish. I don't say that Every person that is not Jewish is Jewish. No, Jewish is one thing. Jewish are the children of the tribe of Judah, of Yehuda, And Israel is a name that is global for all 12 tribes of Israel. And the 12 tribes are not only the Jewish people. The Jewish people are two tribes or one main tribe and other holy people from different tribes who joined the kingship of King David um, in the days of, of before the, the building of the first temple and went with the group that been um that were the the people who followed king david they were the tribe of judah all the rest of the tribes the tribes of shimon of asher of naphtali of gad um, of zvulun of yisachar all the rest of those tribes been exiled by the assyrian king around 3000 years ago and they lost their way and blend with different nations. 
and they went and been exiled by that kingship of the Assyrian to some areas, to Syria and to Iraq and to other, um, today they are Arab uh, countries um, in, the, in the Middle East. Um, but, um, but back then, 3,000 years ago, when they've been exiled to, to those places, for many, many years, they were not allowed to come back to the land of Israel, and they were separated in their kingship for many years from the tribe of Judah, from the Jewish people, and therefore they couldn't come back and rejoin the Jewish people because of the, 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 the reality of the distance and different nations that controlled them. And also in their mindset, they had issues and f fight with the tribe of, of Judah, with the Jewish people. And therefore they had been spread between um, different nations and they traveled the world and found themselves and established themselves as the lost tribes and became different and they lost their memory and they lost their identity and they lost their touch with who they really are, who they were in the first place. And this is how you have today many places around the world that are dreaming of Zion and hoping for Yerushalayim and doing many, many things that are based on tradition that been given to the nation of Israel, but they are still not following the halakha, the Jewish rule that been given to the Jewish people by the sages 1,000 years later. Because all that experience of following the halakha and following the Jewish rules of the Shulchan Aruch is something that happened and established in the days of the second temple in the holy city of Yerushalayim, 1,000 years after the 10 tribes were already gone from the Holy Land. And therefore, there is a great separation between the Jewish people to the rest of the tribes, but the tribes are about to come back and to rejoin the holy people of, of Yerushalayim. And this is why many people around the world are basically Israelis, Israelites, and they don't even know it. And the main evidence for you that, for you to know that you have a spark of, a, of an Israeli soul inside of you, is the fact that you desire Torah, is the fact that you want to believe in God. Because the rest of the nations, and I'm not coming today to explain to you about Christians or Muslims or whatever, I'll soon explain to you that huge amounts of the population of the world are actually the lost tribes of Israel. And you don't even know that. No one knows that. But the nature of being a truth seeker and a real passionate believer and a master of prayer and a holy person who desires goodness is a nature that been carved by God into the hearts of the Israeli people who were standing in front of him in Mount Sinai and got the Torah. It's not the nature of the nations. The nations out there, who knows who they are, most of them were worshipping idols. Most of them were like barbarians. They were not people who search for God. They were not true believers. They were foreign nations. The, the people of faith got all their wisdom from Abraham. And Abraham passed his wisdom to his children. And his children passed it to the next generation. And everyone inherited it because of the hard work and labor of their ancestors. 
and the light came down and been passed as a torch of flaming holy fire from a, a parent to a child, a parent to a child. Now, the tribe of Yehuda, the Jewish people today, are around 15 million people. If the Nazis and their horrible friends wouldn't kill 6 million Jews in the Holocaust, so probably today we were about, let's say, 30 million people. And without all the Crusades and all the rest of the, the, the killings of us for being Jewish people by the church and by other uh, governments and, and armies and, and kingships along the gener uh, in, in earlier generations, if that wouldn't happen, we were probably around 50 million people today. And the truth is that we have been killed for our Judaism, but the rest of the tribes, another 10 tribes that lost, never been killed for the religion, right? And they were able to multiply and to grow freely. No one killed them for being Jewish because they were never Jewish. They were from the tribe of Asher, they were from the tribe of Naphtali, and they also forgot who they were, most of them, the majority of them. So they converted to different religions, and then they became Muslim, or became Christian, or Hindus, or whatever they, they like, secular, they just became whoever they found around them. They joined the people and the nations that were over there, and they blend with them. Okay, so now... Because they have not been killed, so let's say that 10 tribes that went freely to their own direction multiply and gave birth, and you have, let's say, 50 or even more million people to every tribe times 10 you have at least 500 million people to 1 billion people that are all belong directly to the tribes of Israel. You have around 1 billion people that they're all Israelis in their hearts. Okay? That's news. That's the truth. That's reality. Now, if you're going to say, no, but they lost their religion and they now need to convert, okay, drop all this crazy religion thing. I hear you. I'm not saying that they don't need to convert finally. I don't say that, that for them to be Jewish, they don't need to convert. No, if they want to be Jewish, they need to convert. But meanwhile, when they're not converting yet, you cannot say that they're not the children of Jacob. Okay, so they got married with foreign women. Okay, so the girls married with foreign men. Okay, I hear you, but still, do you think that Jacob forgot his children? And that's what you want to say about Jacob? You think that Abram forgot one of his children? Are you sick in your mind? Like that's the Lashon Ra, evil speech that you want to say about our ancestors? You want to talk filthy things about Yaakov and his four wives? You want to say bad things about Leah, about Rachel, about Zilpah, about Bilha, about Rivka? You want to talk about them? You want to say bad things that they forgot their children? You want to tell me that the Creator forgot one of His beloved ones that went to the darkness and to the exile and He will not gather them all back? Are you sick? If you think so, uh, uh, like, unfortunately, I must tell you, you, you you're, you're a maniac. You're sick in your mind. You don't have no understanding of the goodness of the Creator. You don't have no connection to our ancestors, to know how amazing parents they are and they were to their children. Rachel was crying for her children, refused to, 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 to be a, a, a consoled. How you say that? I don't know how you say that. She refused to stop crying. Okay, Rachel, for her children, right? Who were Rachel's children? Who were Rachel's children? Rachel never gave birth to Yehuda. Rachel, she's not the mother of the Jewish people. No, no, no. No. Rachel, she's the mother of 
Ephraim of, of Yosef and Binyamin. Okay, so the majority of the tribe of Binyamin joined the nation of, of joined the tribe of Israel, but consoled. Yeah, thank you, Doris. Okay, but Rachel crying on her children? Her child was Joseph. The main one that she was crying for was Joseph. Second child that she was crying for was Binyamin. Where is Yosef? His children, Menashe and Ephraim, two lost tribes. <laughs> Guys, two lost tribes. And Rachel is still crying for them. Rachel never stopped crying for her children. Who are they? Two lost tribes. Ephraim and, 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 and Menashe. Wake up. Rachel is praying for you, for you to come back. How will you know if you're from the tribes of Israel, the lost tribes of Israel? If a passion and love to the Bible, to the Torah that had been given to the nation of Israel is a flaming fire in your heart, you have a spark of an Israeli soul within. That's the answer to all your questions. Stop doubting yourself, downgrading yourself, judging yourself, hating yourself, blaming yourself. And start loving yourself and recognize and appreciate the amazing soul of yours, the passionate, flaming, holy, godly soul of Israel, a portion of God from above that lives inside of you. And may the Creator bless us all with bounty, with happiness, with joy, with health and holy wealth to rise and shine with wisdom and knowledge and amazing attributes for us to go and spread the truth and the light in the world. Amen. Thank you.